Hey there. Today we're going to do a video on something I've been meaning to do for quite some time. Um, I get a lot of questions about these and rightfully so. They can be confusing if you're just looking at them for the first time or um, wiring something up that you haven't used one of these before, specifically these type. Um, this is a 12 volt 40 amp relay. It is a JD1914 12 volt DC. Um, quite common, you find them in just about everything from cars and trucks to tractors to loaders, ATVs, uh, pretty much anything that's 12 volt, you'll find one of these in there somewhere. Under the hood, in most cases, in the fuse boxes and brain centers, computers of your cars and trucks and SUVs and whatnot, you find them, they often look like this. Uh, many times without this tab on the top here, you just find it the straight square box. It's all pretty much the same thing. They all do the same uh, job, basically. This one here, as I said, is a JD1914. Uh, it's pretty hard to see that. Uh, there's the designation on the top there. 12 volt 40 amp uh, schematic kind of breaks it down in electronic speak for you if you read that uh, if not don't worry about it you can figure it out other ways or watch this video and I'll show you this is a housing for it um, you don't need them you can wire them directly with uh, the same kind of clips and whatnot you use to wire on the back of your rocker switch lights spade connectors uh, with some heat shrink on them obviously that's one way to do it uh, myself I prefer the clips themselves they're very inexpensive like I think I got these ones off eBay from China for pennies uh, they make life a lot easier make your mounting it a bit easier especially if you're going under dash or something you can mount them to the wall or whatnot and you've got some details to work with on this one I've numbered the outside of it uh, just for my own personal use and for explaining and whatnot. So you have an 85, a 30, an 86, an 87, and in the middle, which I haven't numbered on the housing itself because it's hard to do, almost impossible, uh, is the 87A. I didn't mark it on the wire itself, so that's not good to you. So anyway, this is what you would use for your LED bar lights, um, horns, remote starters, car alarms, headlights, anything where you want to send, use a small circuit, a small amount of power or uh, amperage to fire something or use something that requires a lot. So basically you'll use this with a rocker switch or some other switch of some sort to send a small 12 volt signal to it and then it, in turn, is connected to the battery and to the load, whatever that might be, your light or whatever, and it allows a large amount of current to go through without having to run all that current through the switch, which can generally uh, burn up or melt if you try and put that much through it. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are handy and they're used in, like I said, everything. Uh, let's get right to it. All right. So, you have a couple of different ways that these relays can work. Um, for most people, for most applications, there's one real way that they work, and that's that you get a small amount of power that triggers your relay, which allows a large amount of current to come through and power the objects or components that you want power going to. And that's so you don't have a lot going through your switch, obviously. Now, they have an 87A wire on here, and that is a normally open wire. For most people, you're not going to need that, so I tie it off. I, actually, I wouldn't even have bared it. I would clip it, put some heat shrink over it, tie it or shrink it, and be done with it. So for our purposes, we're just going to ignore that 87A wire. Now, what's left is your 30 wire which is the one that goes out to the load. Your 86 wire, which is the one that the power comes to the relay from the switch. The red wire, which is your 87 wire, and that goes to the battery. The 85 wire is your ground, and that it leaves you with those four wires. And that is all you basically need for this. So, 
what we will do with that is we would have your components connected to the blue wire. As I said, we will have a ground going to the 85. We'll also have to have ground going from a power source, the battery, etc. And your power source to the 87 wire, which is to your battery. Now, as I said, the 86 wire here is your switch power, and when it's clicked, it clicks on. Now, you can do the exact same thing with your multimeter and test it that way. So, you set it to your continuity setting, one of my favorite settings on my multimeter. I use it for everything. Now, you've got it set up that way when you hit the switch. The relay clicks, it completes the circuit internally on the relay, the magnet or whichever you want, whatever method they're using, I believe it's a magnet on these ones, compacts down and completes the circuit and then sets the current to your meter. So that is how that works. Don't have it all switched off there. It's very simple. Um, like I said, there, well, there are other ways to do it, and you can get creative with the wiring in them um, using the 87A in conjunction with the 30 wire. If you're just starting out with it and just want your lights and that to work, KIS, keep it simple, stupid, and use the 30 wire, your battery, your negative, and the one to your rocker switch, and you'll have no problems. If we want to show you how this actually works here. We'll do the exact same thing again pretty much. We'll hook it up. 85 goes to the ground. Blue wire, the 30 wire, is our load. So the load will go to the red wire on your LED bar light or other load that you want to use. The ground, which I always like to ground to the battery when I'm working with these, but I will get to that in greater detail in a second here. So now I've got this connected up to the relay to the light, and when I touch the power to it, we should get light to the light. Like that. So that's how that works. Very, very simple when you break it right down, but it, like I said, it can be confusing when you first get to it. So. <clears throat> to reiterate, we got our 86 wire, which is the power to the switch. This is the one that comes out of the switch, the rocker switch, whether you have it in your dash or wherever. This is the one that goes to that rocker switch. So you run a 12 volt power source to that rocker switch, and then on the output of that rocker switch, you would connect the 87 wire or the 86 wire to that, and that 86 wire will trigger the relay. The red wire, which is the 87 wire, the 87 goes to the battery. Now, when you're doing that, it is almost mandatory. Some people don't, but I would always suggest it to run a fusible link in between there. These are, again, they're inexpensive. They're water resistant, not waterproof, but water resistant. So you can't have them under the hood or up on the headache rack or roof rack, whatever you want, kind of a deal. Mount them in the proper direction so you're not gonna get water pooling inside of them, obviously. But you do wanna have it fused to the battery. Um, I like to run these as the relays as close to the battery as I possibly can, and then run the wires out to them. So you have your 87 wire, which connects to your battery. Your 85 wire is your ground. Again, that can be connected to the battery. I like to. Uh, some people will find a ground wire in the wiring harness. That can get a bit problematic if you start splicing into wires, but it is doable if you do it right. The old days you used to mount it right to the frame. Uh, now with the new cars and computers and stuff, that's not really recommended. It can cause problems and it can also over time corrode and depending on how you have it mounted into the frame, it can lead to connection problems later on. So for ease later on and for longevity, wire it right to the battery if you can, get it a good ground and then that's no more of a problem. This 30 wire 
this one is the one that goes to your load. So this goes to your light or your horn or whatever you're trying to power. The 30 wire is the one that leads to that. So you connect that to the power wire on whatever you're using. So in this case, it's an LED light and you would use the red one. So you connect the red to the blue. Pretty simple. And the 30 wire goes to the red wire, the hot wire on the component you're trying to use. The black wire is not used. That is the 87A. Like I said, most people do not use that. So you just tie that one off. Then after that, you have your 85 as your ground, your 30, your load, your 86 wire. I think we've already talked about, but we'll just go over it again. That's the one to your switch. And then you're at the battery again. And that is pretty much all she wrote for a relay. They're relatively simple once you get the hang of them, once you understand them. They last a long time. You really don't have to have a lot of interaction with it after you wire it, as long as you wire it properly. They do a, a perfect job. I mean, these ones here, this is not an expensive one, but they last a long time. And they'll allow you to run off a single switch, so a small rocker switch, which might only have a 5 or 10 amp rating. It allows you to run up to 40 amps through it, through this particular relay, relay because it is a 40 amp relay. So you can run a couple of small pod lights as well as a couple of big bars if you wanted to. Or you could run uh, a winch up to 40 amps or whatever, as long as it doesn't exceed 40 amps. If you exceed 40 amps, then you'll start burning these things out and run a risk of fire as well as the wires and whatnot aren't rated for that. But it's a lot more than that switch, which if you've ever tried to wire up multiple big lights or whatnot onto a small switch, you'll notice that after a little while, it might work fine for a bit, but after a while that thing melts up. And if that's in your dash, that's not a good place to have a fire. So that's pretty much it. That in a nutshell is the JD1914 12 volt uh, relay. They um, excellent. They really, really help you out. I'll be putting a picture of the um, wires and where they go, what their designations are at the end of this video so that you can have something to jot down or whatnot, help you out a bit if you're not wiring it directly in front of your YouTube monitor or smartphone, whatever you're using these days. Um, Anything else I can do, please let me know. Hit that like and comment and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. It is appreciated. Questions, uh, comments, anything like that, let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. So, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Have a great day.